Hello, everyone. I'm really excited to be here today and talk to you about Muse Matrix, which is a decentralized research institute, and we're really focused on driving DeFi forward. So, hey there, I'm Erin. Um, I've been in the DeFi space for a couple of years now with a lot of the different organizations and DeFi DAOs. Um, so really kind of pulling from the whole ecosystem is building towards what we're trying to solve with this decentralized research institute. And it's building off of a couple other trends as well. Um, one is that overall science is becoming less innovative over time with less patents and papers being published as time keeps progressing. And if we continue these timelines out, that's concerning. Also, 50% of scientists are leaving that field from a publishing standpoint within five years. So from the knowledge sharing kind of economy or space, this is another concerning uh, trend. And when we pair that with this kind of grassroots emerging mar market of what we're calling DSI, it's evolved over time. So this is a landscape map by Jocelyn Pearl back in May 2022, which is really when the DSI ecosystem started kind of forming together. Then moving forward into October, it gets bigger, and then it keeps expanding as we mo move forward in time. And so myself and a couple other researchers got together to look at what are the needs of the DSI ecosystem as they're creating publications, building out partnerships, shipping new projects and products. And ultimately we found that they need a lot of help with talent attraction and funding, but most everywhere needs help with funding. So uh, we're focused on that talent attraction piece. But taking a step back, what does talent in DSI really mean? And there are kind of two different groups, developers and scientists. On the developer side, they need to learn some of the challenges in science. And without that background, we found that that's kind of overwhelming for a lot of them who might want to work in this space. And then, then on the scientific side, they might not be as exposed to some of these different emerging technologies. So there's an educational component that's needed there, as well as opportunities for both of these groups of people to cross-pollinate ideas together. And those types of shelling points just aren't happening enough or aren't happening at scale in meaningful types of ways. And that's really where Muse Matrix comes in, building off of this as well as talking with many other leaders in the ecosystem. And so myself uh, and Barrett are really kind of driving this initiative forward. He's the founder of DSI London, which is the largest in-person DSI community has an amazing annual conference as well as monthly meetups if you're ever in the area. And we've built out this fellowship program um, that's six months long, it's part-time and designed to be additive for each of the fellows, scientists and developers being the two target audiences. Starts with six weeks of peer-to-peer -peer learning about what is DSI, these technologies, challenges in science, followed by two weeks of project scoping, and then four months of tangible output, which is either product development or publishing research papers. And we just kicked off cohort one a couple weeks ago, so really excited to be able to share this with all of you, getting this kind of off the ground. We have about 10 fellows per uh, group, and it's both in real life or in person as well as online. So we have one group in person that meets weekly in London, then one group online. And they're located all over the world. We also have a couple other groups in Africa and Latin America popping up later this summer. And then all these other regions uh, over the course of the upcoming months. And we would like to expand more. So if you're located in a certain location um, or have ties somewhere, maybe it's a university or institution, we would love to be able to partner with them, introduce them to DSI and see how that can enhance the work they're already doing. Really the goal of kind of building in all of those locations is to create these synergistic ties across people uh, across the world and also as we address a few different focus areas. 
These are different zones that we see high opportunity in, longevity, neurotech, biosecurity, and synbio. But this is also dictated by our partners and, and their interests. We really aim to, one, upskill devs and scientists, and that's primarily covered in that educational phase one. Produce tangible outputs, which is achieved in, in phase two, that four month period. And then also funnel legitimate talent into the DSI ecosystem, tying back to one of those core needs I mentioned earlier. And we have a credentialing system, part of this program, to help make sure people are trustworthy in the space. And like I said before, we do this with a whole bunch of our partners. These are a couple listed, but we have like 30 more. And we're really doing this and taking it through a community collaboration type of approach to build this out. So it will evolve over time as well. But we would love for you to be part of it, whether that's as a mentor, that can be one off or throughout the whole program applying to be a fellow, especially if you have one of those primary backgrounds and might want some more exposure into DSI. Um, or if you have a specific project in mind that you would like to see created, but maybe you don't have the capacity to facilitate making that happen right now. Um, that can either look like a public good or maybe a larger infrastructure play. And that's really a question we're continuously asking ourselves. What critical infrastructure or just overall, what is missing that needs to be addressed or built out? And this often comes back to kind of a quote we often say of don't trust, verify. And this seems to be a really critical piece missing. And that's what we're building out with our core project uh, for this first co cohort called Causality Network. And Causality Network is ultimately an authentication protocol for scientific data as it's produced from IoT devices. Um, and it sits at that intersection between data suppliers and data consumers, kind of in this whole scientific data marketplace conversation. And it's also sitting at the intersection of a few different trends from scientists becoming creators, IoT devices becoming core of scientific research, robotic automation, and then AI coming into the equation more and more. So we have a roadmap with a handful of partners that have different devices or have a lab already that will be integrating in the upcoming months. If you also have a device or a lab that you would like this protocol and just enhanced kind of data authentication layer added into everything you're doing, we would love to work with you as well. Um, or if you just want to be kind of part of this whole network or support and stay updated uh, with what we're working on, um, we would love to keep chatting with you too. Ultimately, we have a lot of cool long-term visions that might align with some of the visions you could see for the future as well. A few that we're really inspired by are the idea of autonomous labs, such as being in a shipping container, and we can just conduct science from afar. Um, and then and machine, to machine experiments being the driver of science and having records of that on chain and verifiable for everyone, as well as data standards across the board. So if you're inspired by that, please get involved or reach out to me. Thanks. Thank you.